Hello, I'm Waffles Are Better. In this video, I'll be talking about how to create custom fonts using resource packs in Java Edition Minecraft. Not only will you be able to make custom fonts, but you can add custom characters using custom fonts, like this over here. This is my channel logo, as you can see, except I have added it into the game using a special custom character. If I talk in chat, you can see that I have changed the capital A into a smiley face, and I have done that by editing the default Minecraft font. And as you can see in chat, I have sent a Telbra message with a custom font that I added in this video that just adds random dots into letters because I couldn't think of any better ideas for a font. But I'm sure that you can, and that's why I'm making this video. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go into Assets and create a new folder, uh, and then Minecraft, and inside of Minecraft you're going to want to create a new folder called Textures, so of course. And then inside of Textures you're going to want to create a new folder, and that's going to be called Font. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to just modify the default font that's already in the game. So to do that you can use the default assets and data files that you can get from extracting the version.jar file in your game files. So for example, if I go to my .minecraft folder, then I can go to versions and then say I want the 1.17.1 version, I would extract this .jar file and inside of there, there's going to be um, an assets folder and a data folder. You're going to want to open the assets folder, then Minecraft and then textures, and then inside of textures, go to font. And inside of font, the one that you're going to want to be modifying is most likely the ascii.png file. So I'm just going to open Chrome, and I'm going to go to Pixel app. I find that that is one of the best ways to create uh, pixel images and textures for Minecraft. So I'm just going to import and browse images. I'm going to open the ascii.png. We have all of the default symbols for the font. So as I said before, the main one you're going to modify is the ASCII one because that's just the main characters, the alphabet and numbers and stuff. So accented is going to be all the accented letters and other special characters. And uh, ASCII underscore SGA, the SGA stands for Standard Galactic Alphabet and that is what the enchanting table uses. So. Here, let me just import that right now. So as you can see, this is the enchanting table language, but I'm going to just modify this language and the other fonts, non-Latin European, this is going to be other language characters. And I believe Unicode pages include things like emojis and other special characters. There we go, the A has turned into a smiley face. So every time I type a capital letter A, that should be a smiley face and maybe uh, the S can be a sad face. There we go, the S is now a sad face. Uh, they don't quite match perfectly, but that's not the point. I'm just trying to show you how you can modify these characters. So then if you go ahead and export this file, so this is the file that I downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into fonts, just like that. And so as you can see, this PNG is now in the Assets Minecraft Textures font folder, so that is just like how it is in the default game files, and that's basically how you make a regular resource pack. So now let me get into how to actually create your own font. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new namespace. I'm just going to call this example, I guess. You can name it whatever you want as long as it follows the naming guidelines. It needs to be made of all lowercase letters and regular numbers, and uh, it can also include underscores and hyphens, but nothing else. So inside of that, you're going to want to create a new folder called font. And so this, the font is going to be uh, directly inside of the namespace instead of how it is here, where font is inside of the textures folder inside of the namespace because this is for font files instead of font textures. So if I go ahead and create a new file inside of font and call it font.json, you can call it whatever you want again as long as it goes with the naming rules. So the first thing that's going to go in here is of course a curly bracket and inside of the curly bracket, you're 
going to want to put providers and then a colon and a square bracket. Inside of this square bracket, you're going to want another curly bracket and inside of that, you're going to want to put type in quotation marks. So type can be one of three things, but I'm only going to be focusing on one of them. The one that I'm going to be focusing on is bitmap, but the other options are legacy underscore unicode and TTF. The reason that I'm only going to be talking about bitmap is that bitmap is the one that is used the most for the game and is probably the one that you're going to want to be using for a custom font. So after type, you're going to want to type file, and this is just going to be the location of the file that your custom font is going to be in. So I'm just going to quickly make another custom font file. I couldn't really think of anything interesting, so all I did was just put a random dot and a bunch of the letters. But of course, you could really do whatever you wanted here. So uh, to put the file somewhere in my pack, in example, I'm going to create a new folder called textures, just like I did with the Minecraft namespace, and inside of there, uh, another folder called font. And again, this is exactly what I did with the Minecraft namespace. I'm just going to then take this font file that I have just exported and put it into the font folder. So you'll see in a minute why I decided to use one of the default texture files for my pack and just modify it a little bit. You don't have to do that, but in my opinion, that is the easiest way to do so. So once that is done, I'm going to go back to my font file inside of the font folder, and I'm going to change file to the location of this texture file that I just put in my pack. So that's going to be in my namespace. So example, which is the name of this folder, and then just font slash dots because it's in the font folder inside of textures and the dots file inside of the font folder. Oh, and one more thing, I believe you do have to specify that it is a .png file. So then after file, you're going to want to put ascent. I think this tells you basically how tall each of the characters are in your file, and this is normally going to be seven. And this has to do with the location in your texture that it is getting the characters from. I believe this has to be, yeah, that has to be a number, not in quotation marks. And then there's another parameter that you can put here that is optional called height. And this just determines how big or small it scales the image to be in pixels. So by default, it is eight, but you can change the size of the font characters by changing this height size. But if you don't want to change anything, then you can just leave the height parameter out of this. And then the last one, which is probably the most important, is the chars parameter, which I guess would be pronounced cares because it means characters. So this is actually going to tell the game which letters or numbers or other special characters your font is representing. So this section, the characters section, is why I use the default ASCII image for my font, which is because it already has what all of the characters are called laid out. So of course you're going to want a square bracket which I forgot to do before I showed you this, but you need a square bracket, and then you need lists of all of the characters in your file, and I will show you what that means. So as you can see, this is the character 0000, and then if I go back to the font image, you can see that the first few rows of the texture are not actually any letters or numbers or other characters, so that corresponds to the first two rows of this list. And so the first two rows are the characters 0000, so they are both blank. And same with these rows of 0000, you can see in the middle, oops. You can see in the middle of the file, there is also some blank characters. So you're going to definitely want to leave those 0000s in because you don't want the game to accidentally replace any other characters. But then, as you can see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 
of these symbols in a row. So then, of course, you can probably see where this is going if you count the amount of symbols in a row in the file. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And if you count the amount of rows in this list, there are also 16 rows. And so if you count the rows in this image, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So basically, everything in this characters list is going to correspond to a single character on this image. So you're going to want to definitely make sure that you have all of this correctly in there. So I'm just going to copy all of this because I use the default file so all of these characters are already made for me. Then I'm going to go back to the font file and paste it in here. If you created your own file and did not use the ASCII layout, you can just figure out which of these symbols corresponds to the ASCII image so you can figure out which of them you need to put in your characters section. So the last thing that I'm going to do is just maybe take my um, channel image and then let's say that I want to make this a special character in the default font. Now that I'm thinking about that, I'm going to move it to the Minecraft namespace folder. So in Minecraft, I'm going to create a new folder called font, just like I did in my example namespace. So then once you have the Minecraft font file, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this other font file that I've made and paste it back into the Minecraft font folder. I'm then going to rename font.json to default, and it's very important that you name it default. And so then what I am going to do is just delete all of these in the list. So I have a blank character section, and I'm going to keep the type as bitmap, but I'm going to change the file to the icon file that I just put in the folder. So that's Minecraft, because it's under the Minecraft namespace, and then font, and then icon.png. So let me check what the size that I just put in there was. Assets, Minecraft, textures, font. So I'm going to right click on it and get the properties, and then go to details, and you should see that it is 64 by 64 pixels. So I'm going to go back here and change the ascent to 64 because that's how big it's going to be and I guess the height should also be 64 because I want it to be the size of the actual image and then what you're going to actually want to put in characters is something like backslash UE000 and the reason that you're going to put E000 is that anything that begins with the capital letter E in Unicode is a private use symbol, which means it isn't assigned to any other characters. So any characters or symbols that you create that start with a capital E like this are not going to accidentally override any other existing symbols. So yeah, so this E can be E or F, and any of these zeros can be uh, from zero to nine, or from A to capital F. So an example is, yeah, needs to be just a regular number, not in quotation marks. So I've opened up Minecraft. I'm just going to enable the font and let's see what happens. So I have just enabled the resource pack and I am waiting for it to load up. And hopefully you will see, oh yeah, already you can see that the S in skin customization has been replaced by a sad face and basically anything in here let me search for s you're gonna get um polished happy face to sight stuff like that so that is the um if i go back to my resource pack that is this png the ascii.png that is overriding the default ascii font now i'm going to try using this font the custom dots font that i made um, under the custom namespace. So to do that, I'm going to do slash Telra um, and myself. <laughs> this is smiley face in my name. I just find that funny for some reason. Um, Telra waffles are better. And then in quotation marks, I'm going to put 
text and then a colon and then basically what I want to say. So I'm just going to say waffles are cool, I guess. And then I'm going to put font and this font is going to be, I think I called it example namespace and then dots is the font. It says waffles are cool, but using the font that adds some dots to it. But if I just typed waffles are cool without that special font option, then as you can see, it does not add the dots into those letters. And then the last thing that I did, uh, if you remember, is to add that special character that was my channel icon. So I'm going to just type in the Unicode uh, character ID that I gave it, so that was uh, backslash U capital E 000. You might have used a different one, but that will just put that character in chat. And so, what's cool about custom fonts is you can also do stuff like adding colors. So, for example, I can do dark red as the color, and it'll say that in dark red. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering what happens if I make my channel icon one into dark red. Let me see if I do slash UE000. Oh, that's interesting. It just tints it to whatever color. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything I covered in this video, or if you have any ideas for things you want me to cover in future videos, you can let me know in the comments, or you can join my Discord server linked in the description and talk to me about them there. If anyone's wondering how I made that armor stand in the background since I didn't talk about it in the video, um, this is the command that I used. Summon armor stand command with a custom name, and the custom name is the special character. As usual, I just want to say that I really appreciate every single one of you, and thank you so much for watching.